Well, Virgin Mobile is looking to raise up to $100 million from investors and private equity groups. This is to roll out the mobile network services to at least six new markets, with Brazil, Colombia, Chile, Poland, South Africa and Oman being targeted as expansion areas. Joining us on the line for more is Derbeck Pata, ICT analyst at Africa Analysis. So this news flow on Virgin Mobile must have the telecommunications industry abuzz with chatter today, Derbeck. Oh, good evening, yes, uh, that and uh, another news item, I suppose, as well. In terms of what it means uh, for the South African landscape, obviously some of that investment they have stated will go into South Africa. Do you think it will shake up our existing telecommunications environment? Well, um, it, it very much depends on what Virgin Mobile ends up offering to customers, but I think it probably will be more of a non-event. The, the numbers bandied about are sort of in the region of 100 million U.S. investment, but that's split across a number of markets. So if you look at the South African market, you know, operators commit investments in the order of billions of rands every year, including Celsino and ATA, mm. versus Virgin Mobile spending a, a couple few hundred million at most. Uh, the, the, it's not going to, I think, make a, a dent in the market. Uh, but we don't know if, if, the, if the plan is to just upset the market you know, completely by offering something that uh, that hasn't been seen before. Uh, obviously, risking not realizing profits and, and going into debt, then yeah, that would change the market. But that's very unlikely to happen. I think mean, Virgin Mobile is a very small operator in the market that's extremely competitive when it comes to South Africa, uh, and that's uh, especially over the past year, 18 months, and the market that's completely penetrated. So. In order to attract customers, you do have to be, I think, fairly radical. Ever since Alan Not Craig took over as CEO at Celsi, I've been waiting for fireworks to to hit the floor, and uh, perhaps this is it in terms of Celsi and a possible tie-up with ATA. What are your thoughts on that front? Well, uh, yeah, we we have seen small fireworks, I suppose, or, or growing fireworks, certainly more than uh, maybe was the case two years ago. Uh, the, the potential merger of Celsi and ATA, uh, it's still early days. I think both parties are probably just uh, exploring a possibility. It's not uh, infeasible and it's not uncommon for small operators to pull forces together in order to compete against larger operator or operators in markets. But I suppose we still need to really delve into what how both parties would benefit, uh, because if we look at uh, Derbeck, I want to come. Just hang on. A, uh, yeah. I want to come back to to studio here and get your thoughts on it. Ian Hater and uh, Celsi, do you think they could be a force to to reckon with if they joined forces? Well, it would be a logical move because the South African mobile market is relatively mature. You know, uh, I think if one counts the number of, uh, of of instruments and the population who could possibly use one, it's more than one to one. Well, there's not a lot of space to grow in there, so better to combine forces than to be operating with new, uh, new forces in there. Something that I do like about the Virgin Mobile uh, move is that it shows their business uh, profile, prepared to go for what they may make, not overly concerned by the fact that in their terms there may be a for small loss. Rather, let that be outplayed by a better profit. Moving to, to Virgin Mobile on that, yes. I want to bring it back to ATA Celsi. Mm -hmm. Makes sense in your book? It makes sense, but you know, as you mentioned, the problem is the South African market is very saturated, and that it amuses me as to why Virgin would think that they would possibly be able to make a further dent in the South African market where the smaller um, opportunities haven't really panned out. You know, they were talking about possibilities into Russia and Turkey as well, but looking to establish the airline first and then go in with the, Vo the, the, the Virgin Mobile. So I'm not sure exactly whether that aligns with their business plan, and that's the way that they they go about um, creating a presence but it doesn't make sense to me that they can be extremely profitable in this kind of environment. Moving on and staying with news in the telecommunications sector, mobile operator MTN has confirmed that a US court has put on hold the $4.2 billion lawsuit against it by Turkish rival Turksal. And this as the US Supreme Court is hearing oral arguments in a high profile case against Royal Dutch Shell. The case may determine whether foreign corporations can be sued in US courts under an 18th century law. The outcome of that decision is likely to determine whether Turkcell can go ahead with its suit against MTN. Dobek, let's get your thoughts on that front. 
Well, it's always been a peculiar, I think, way of approaching it in terms of jurisdiction, but, uh, you know, for, I suppose for, for logical reasons, trying to leverage um, American, uh, to an extent, uh, maybe not so friendly relations with Iran, uh, and, and hope that uh, that somehow would benefit Turkso. But, uh, you know, apart from that pretty far-fetched link, uh, the U.S. jurisdiction is absolutely, I think, and, and uh, the, the, the involvement of uh, possibly breaking of sanctions by MPN by using U.S. equipment uh, imported into Iran. Uh, you know, there, there's no logical case to, to have this, uh, this this case being uh, put forward in, in a U.S. jurisdiction. So well, just looking, Dobek, if we look at, at MTN at the moment, at 158 rand, uh, up slightly today, uh, one-fifth of a percent higher, pretty much in, in line with the broader market. What, what is your view on that valuation right now? Pretty close to all-time highs on MTN. Is there more upside, in your opinion? Uh, the potential could be more upside. And MTN is in healthy markets. Uh, Iran, and, and the movement may have been a little bit reflective of uh, maybe the sentiment towards MTN in Iran. It, it is a growth market going into the future, and if MTN uh, can dismay or allay any fears of its operations possibly being derailed in this country, then I think it certainly uh, would prove beneficial to MTN. But uh, MTN is still in a, in a number of growth markets are moving from a voice into a data uh, usage, intensive data usage phase over the next couple of years, uh, expansion of the business market segment. Uh, when you say upside, how much upside could there be, Dobek, or are you not going to give me a number? No, I won't give you a number. I've got to try my luck. I have to try my luck. It's my job.